Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. And today we're taking a look at this little fella, the NetApp A250. Now we have looked at the NetApp A250 already. We did a review, so why are we here today? I don't know. Well, it's faster now. Did you put new drives into it? No. Faster interface cards? No. Why is it faster? Protocol. We went from uh, FCP to NVMe over FC. Okay, so NVMe over Fabrics, we did that with, what, the A300 a year or so ago? 800. 800, 300, whatever. We did it with NetApp about uh, a year or so ago, and what happens when you go to NVMe over Fabrics is you get a really nice latency profile out of the box. So while the SAN features are nice and, and those are comfortable for most uh, practitioners in the enterprise, this whole wave of NVMe over Fabrics is the hot spot right now. And that, can, with DPUs, with all the other protocol enhancements, there's so much going on in that space. Wait, and VMware finally supports it natively. Yeah, so we've got VMware support, and we'll walk through some of that in a little bit. So what do we have in this box from a hardware perspective? Uh, I believe it's, well, it looks tell. like it's 12 drives. It is 12. Yes, I was thinking 8, but yes, it's a, it's a half-C uh, configuration on the uh, drives, but... It's enough to uh, saturate what the A250 is capable of. Okay, and it's NVMe drives in the front and throughout the entire system. Uh, should we spin it around, take a look at the back? Yeah, and actually, one important thing with uh, NetApp is they have both NVMe front-end and back-end support, which they have back-end uh, back support for even legacy devices using uh, SAS front-end drives, but they're supporting both ends of that protocol. Okay. All right, so we quickly spun this thing around. What are we looking at in the back? It's obviously a dual controller design. NetApp's been using those for quite literally ever. Yeah, so we have our uh, fiber channel uh, uh, transceivers. Uh, so these give us uh, 32 gig uh, support. Times then, four ports each controller, right? Yes. And then uh, we have our uh, link connectivity for node-to-node um, uh, -node connections. And then I believe they also do some internal connectivity at the... Uh, uh, drive backplane uh, to provide redundant support there. And then we have uh, Ethernet support. We didn't leverage it for uh, this review, but it's they really cover everything on their arrays. So in terms of expansion, what does the A250 offer? Uh, scale options. So you can do uh, up to uh, 24 HA pairs, or 12 HA uh, pairs. 24 through, nodes. Yeah, right. 24 nodes. Um, and being NVMe based, that's pretty much leveraging uh, front on board uh, SSDs only throughout those HA pairs. I mean, it'd be hard to imagine the A250 is really sort of at that lower entry part of the ONTAP portfolio. It'd be hard to imagine people scaling that this that much, but I guess you can if you want to. Oh, yeah, and they give you other options to expand storage, like storage grid and other areas where maybe you're not looking for uh, the peak performance expansion on the storage side or you're just looking for uh, bulk storage to offload. Oh, the cloud connectivity. Yeah. I mean, the ONTAP's got some of the deepest cloud connectivity out there. AWS uses the the, uh, the filer uh, in, in their scenario. Yeah, we've, uh, we've done work in the past uh, connecting this up to like Azure Blob, but they can, they, uh, yeah. ONTAP supports a lot of different uh, cloud connectivity options. So I think there's been a lack of adoption in the fabrics world or NVMe over fabrics world of systems like this because people think it's complicated or scary or expensive. Well, if you're a, Net, uh, if you're a NetApp shop that uses uh, VMware, for example, uh, you might have been hesitant to uh, go towards full NVMe support without having the VMware side. Connected. Oh, sure. Yeah, I guess if you're highly virtualized and there's no support, then that makes it hard. Yeah. Uh, what about cost? Uh, cost is entirely free. Now, NetApp won't give you the well, array for free. Free, but <laughs> the, the license for NVMe. Yeah, there's no add of cost okay. to, to uh, get their NVMe support. What about complexity of environment? You know, when we test it as a SAN, how is that different than as testing it over Fabrics? Uh, it's really just a instead of provisioning out uh, lunge provisioning NVMe namespaces. It's but there's not like a hardware requirement, more switching, more cabling, anything that's complicated there. Most of uh, if you're on native uh, 32 gig fiber channel, for example you're probably gonna have uh, support for it already at your, uh, the initiator side for your fiber channel cards. Um, and you're, it's really just a making sure the software is in play. If it's 16 gig uh, fiber channel cards, you may have to look at your compatibility list to see if it supports it, but uh, a lot of the newer hardware, it's just a turn a switch, enable it, and you're done. Okay. So there is a lot of concern in the industry about how to leverage these things uh, 
in your environment. So why don't we actually, we, normally we would just jump into performance and get going, but why don't we do a little bit on management and, uh, and show what that looks like in VMware. Yeah. So we're looking at uh, the ONTAP system manager side, and this is how you're configuring the array, and honestly, it's gonna look the same as the FCP side since it uses the exact same software. It's more of the uh, setup. So here you have your uh, storage tier, which in our case we have uh, our two uh, pools. It gives us uh, like 10 terabytes of storage. And our configuration, I believe, is only eight uh, SSDs. It's, a, it's either eight or 10 SSDs, a very, very small config, but it's more of the, um, the baseline of you can get a lot out of it uh, since it's NVMe storage now. Um, so we have our uh, storage tier, and before you create a volume, and then you can present LUNs off of that, here we have our volume, since this is NVMe, we have a new area for NVMe namespaces. So we uh, create the namespaces that we ultimately uh, share out through uh, the storage VM on the, F uh, on the fiber channel side, and then it hits the um, uh, virtual host. So compared to standard LUN provisioning, from a, just from an ONTAP perspective, how much extra legwork, if any, is involved in, in doing the uh, uh, NVMe over fiber? Not really. It's basically just a, instead of going in through door A, you go through door B. And both of them, since they're fiber channel, you still need to deal with um, uh, zoning. Uh, it's, uh, the, the back end process is pretty equivalent. Okay, so that's the ONTAP view. What about in the hypervisor? What goes on there Any uh, that looks different or, or might stand out to a practitioner? Well, so to start, you need a uh, version of ESXi that will support it. We're using uh, uh, ESXi 7 Update 2, and uh, a lot of it just comes down to um, VMware for a very long time to not support uh, NVMe. Uh, on the uh, shared storage side uh, for fiber channel and to a lesser extent uh, Ethernet for a while. And uh, now they start to incorporate those features and it becomes more commonplace instead of more of a customized feature. Okay. Um, and uh, for the uh, storage, so we have uh, Emulex uh, fiber channel adapters in this uh, system. They're 32 gig uh, HBAs. And um, now we see four devices. These are. Um, on the same card it's not uh, it's not like a four port card it's just it's a dual port you have uh, your traditional port and then the virtual port for uh, the nvme side and uh, so here this is uh, fcp and you get your these are the devices it sees that's been zoned and then you have uh, the paths uh, since some of these will be uh, like round rob and whatnot um, now if you move over to uh, one of the nvme devices you still get your paths, you get your devices, but you start seeing their NVMe, uh, your, their NVMe devices. And they're also, uh, you get your NVMe namespaces, as well as your NVMe controllers, uh, which it's it gets you to the same endpoint, but you can see there's a little bit more going on behind the scenes, but VMware kind of handles it. It sees, it sees the controllers, you can add some manually, but a lot of these things are just discovered as they're zoned to the uh, server. So from the hypervisor standpoint, then similar workflow to uh, you know from the provisioning aspect with just a little more data, I suppose. Yeah. So I mean, I could delete one of these uh, data stores, but it's the same process. You go through here, storage, add new data store. It sees it as a, uh, an available thing, and you can create your um, uh, VMFS onto it, and just kind of go from there. There's there's not to the uh, to the front end user. You don't see a huge difference between uh, FCP or NVMe. It's pretty agnostic there, uh, and it's pretty simple to configure. Okay, so simple to configure, pretty easy. Um, all the recent NetApp arrays are are supporting uh, NVMe over Fabric, so certainly something that. There uh, should be no apprehension to leverage if you're a, a NetApp customer. And you can even do this on a um, uh, NetApp array that does not have NVMe uh, storage. So even our uh, NetApp uh, AFF uh, A200 supports uh, NVMe on the back end, even though it has SAS on the front end. They've, they've had that support built in with um, ONTAP, and it's 
it's not, there's nothing that would prevent you from running it today. So performance is surprisingly good. You look at this as a, okay, the interface changed, so what? But uh, a big part of going to NVMe or Fabrics versus uh, just traditional uh, fiber channel or traditional iSCSI is you get a big uh, you get a, a big improvement with less overhead. Um, so as we look at our uh, synthetic results, starting with like 4K random read, you go from um, I think we're a little bit over uh, you're just under 600,000 IOPS on um, uh, traditional fiber channel. We pushed almost 800,000 IOPS for 4K random read. And now the top number gets faster, but there's a huge latency differential improvement, even at the uh, mid and low levels uh, where... Well, that's the story across the board, right? And we saw that with, what, the A300? Didn't we do this with? Uh, A800. A800, right. Uh, where the latency improvement was the, the big winner. Yeah, and you, some of it plays out in the application workloads where... If you're not running at the very top end of the performance uh, profile, latency is substantially lower and performance is higher. So it's there's a lot of good stuff that comes with uh, going to NVMe or Fabric. Um, again, going to a 4K random write, uh, we see improvement from uh, around 170,000 IOPS at the peak to 183, and also a massive uh, latency improvement uh, up until that top end number. Uh, sequential read, um, they both it both came out pretty close. Uh, traditional fiber channel, we came out at uh, 7.13 uh, gigabytes per second. Uh, NVMe or Fabrics uh, measured just under that 6.8. Uh, we do have a small configuration, so there's there's some oddities uh, that'll come out that aren't necessarily problems. It's just we're running at the fringe with a very small configuration. So your results may vary, but even there, uh, where we didn't hit the uh, same top end number, the latency profile was substantially lower across the entire spectrum. Uh, sequential write, this was another one where um, now when you're looking at the chart, it's like, okay, you're going from 2.6 to 3 gigabytes per second, but there's a massive drop in uh, latency across that entire chart. Uh, nothing to really say, okay, well, there's like no minimal, ch there's like no change there. I mean, you're going to see a huge improvement in latency for application response time. Again, we see that in our... Uh, application workloads. And then scanning through the rest of our um, uh, synthetic workloads, uh, SQL, for example, huge uh, huge bump in performance as well as a, another drop in latency. Um, the Oracle workload, again, improves performance, lowers latency. Uh, the VDI workloads um, over there, I mean, you see some change uh, with improvements. There, the gap starts to uh, narrow slightly, but you're gonna. A lot of it comes down to what workloads you're running in. Databases, primarily 8K uh, databases. Smaller block VDI workloads, you're gonna run into uh, larger block workloads. So if we look at uh, like the uh, full clone boot, uh, pretty good change there with a uh, latency drop. Uh, with link clone boot, um, it actually gets pretty close. They're um, they're roughly on top of one another, but Results may vary depending on the workload you're running on, but overall, if you can support NVMe or Fabric, there's no reason not to do it. All right, so we took a look at uh, how it looks and works in VMware. You got your hypervisor co covered. Uh, you've got a massive performance advantage, latency gains throughout, right? Lower latency gains. Right. And cost issue, not it's really a free. thing. It's yeah, included it's... in your NetApp support contract. Yeah. Uh, complexity. A little extra work in VMware, but mm. it's just a different type of work. It's different the same. It's the same number of steps, just in different ways. So, if you're a NetApp customer, or even if you're looking at Fabrics NVMe over Fabrics in general, which we'll be doing a lot more work on coming up, so stay tuned for that. Why not do this? Um, maybe if you're hesitant, or if you've just wanted to say, "Hey, I want to stick with what works," but yeah, there's there's value in that, I suppose. Yeah, but if you're in the process of upgrading servers or rolling out software updates, things like that, I mean, there's there's really no reason to not do it. There's not, and you get free lower latency. Yes. So why not do it? So we'll leave it on that. Free lower latency for all. If you're a NetApp customer, check out uh, NVMe over Fabrics. It's a uh, uh, guaranteed hit. Thanks for tuning in.